legendary. Never gets old. 22-year vet in the league, eight-time All-Star joining us now. Great color, Vince Carter. That's just hey, popping man. off the screen. I tried to do something a little different, man. I know we're all boring with our <laughs> black shirt. Whatever. Hey, and that's uh, hard to wear a black shirt. What's crazy? <laughs> I know we're the worst. Oh, look, okay. We started the show, rightfully so, with Dame Lillard's game-winning shot. Uh, it was his fourth all-time from three, and only one player has more buzzer-beating threes in his career. Who was that? Down. Dame got to slow down a little bit. <laughs> Dame got to slow down a little bit. Shoot to two, man. <laughs> nope. Nope. Are you nervous? Are you nervous he's coming for you? Nah, I mean, you know, records are made to be broken. I know at some point uh, it's going to happen, and that's what Dame does. I mean, he has the ability to shoot the three-point shot from the line to half court and anywhere in between. Uh, oh, I remember this one. One of my <laughs> favorites. That, I told Coach I was going for the three for the win. He's like, all right, cool. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Dame Man. has that ability. I mean, he's he's a clutch player, uh, not afraid of the big moment, regardless of who's on the court, wh- or who's he around. So, yeah, I expect to not to last long. Where's the Dallas one in the corner over there by the bench? Oh, right I'm now. sure to show up. I'm sure to show up. <laughs> Chandler remembers all of them. Um, that was the last one. Like, the, the, the Lakers, it's just been a weird year for the Lakers. Yeah. I think that's fair to say. They've lost seven of their last ten. And we know that Anthony Davis took a bit of a responsibility for Saturday's loss to the Jazz. But what's going on? Whose fault is it? Can you put the blame even in one place? I personally don't think you can put the, the the fault in one place. I mean, naturally it happens. And the first person they look at is the coach. Uh, and, and why can't you get this team, you know, together? Why can't you win with all this talent? But I, I think it's a, it's a mixture of everything. And, and we saw last year, we were in this t- same situation where they were losing. They look at the coach and then all of a sudden, you know, just like I say, well, it's now the GM's responsibility to fix this problem. You have to fix this problem. You, you, you see that, it's not working in the locker room. You see guys, whatever you give them their chance. And now it's time to kind of put it together to make your run because February, if not, excuse me, I, well, I'm used to February being halfway, but all-star break is coming around the corner. And then once all-star break gets here, it's all about getting in position. So I think they need to kind of figure out what they want to do now, move some pieces. I know we hear whispers of different guys that they want, but I, I think it's a mixture of everything. Confidence, Obviously, we hear uh, LeBron being disgruntled, uh, but you, you're going to have to figure this out. The, every, all the, the masterminds behind moving people are going to have to sit down and figure it out immediately, in my opinion. It's it's crazy because the in-season tournament was literally 20 minutes ago, it feels like. But the season ended today. They're not even in the play-in, Vince. I, it's weird to imagine a world, especially now, where LeBron doesn't make it further into any kind of a Beatles. postseason. Can you see it? I- I'm gonna say why I think, in my opinion, I think it's, it's a it's a it's a sample size. So it's like once the playoffs get here, you, 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 your your focus changes. You you know what you have to do when the season. You're talking about a longer season. Uh, you know, guys. Uh, you know, LeBron probably needed to to rest or minutes. Well, he was playing more minutes to to make sure that they won once they got themselves in position. And and right now it's just guys aren't playing well. You know, everybody's disgruntled. You're looking here whatever the situation may be. And of course you're hearing the outside noise, which in reality, you know, we know, well, for, for sure. I, I, well, Luke, you've been around well, both of y'all. It, you know, when I got in the game, you didn't, the outside noise was just people talking, not social media and all that stuff. And you can turn the TV off. It's hard to turn it all off. And particularly in LA. Yeah. Guys that we talked so much about the moves that Palenka made and it looked like a genius and what they were able to pull off, but that, that roster is there. So, are we thinking that the front office is letting LeBron down by not doing more? Is what they did not enough, Chandler? Like, what what is happening and what needs to happen? Well, I think the turnaround that they had last year is kind of why some people are giving them some grace, right? Because you hear all these rumors that D'Angelo Russell, Rui, they were waiting for that date to come where those guys are available. I think they're going to still make those moves. They're waiting on Gabe Vincent to get healthy, to put him back in the starting lineup. Then there's questions, is Austin Reeves, do they want to continue to build around him and him be that third, fourth option? Or do they include him in a play and kind of take that risk and go and get a Zach Levine or a DeMar DeRozan, someone like this? So I think Palenka did such a good job turning their season around. A lot of people aren't panicking, but when you look at the, the last 10 games, they're three and seven. Now you're hearing all these different stories. Everyone's disgruntled and LeBron James can't be their best player and their most energizing, energized player every single night. 
the frustration is mounting up. So I fully look for them to make a move. But a lot of times a player in a locker room, it's obnoxious just hearing every day you're going to get traded. This guy's going to go. So D'Lo has got to try and stay focused. We see him skipping media. So now he's clearly pissed off. So I feel like sometimes just the best play is just to make a move, pull the bandaid off, and then you have your team moving forward to build with and to try and compete with. But right now there's two up in the air for them to succeed. Lou, are you agreeing with that? I feel like you're shaking Look, your head. Look, I've played... Yeah, because I've played for the Lakers. It's a completely different environment, completely different level of expectation where you're in that when you're in that purple and gold. Look, this is the Los Angeles Lakers. This is America's team when it comes to basketball. They have a standard of championships. They don't care about division titles, even though they hung up the end season tournament banner. That was kind of that was kind of funny considering it was the Lakers. But this team has such a level of excellency that they expect. They're going to make moves. You know, some of these guys that they championed early on in the season and early on in their careers and they were going to be this and that, it's not working out. They're going to make some moves and they're going to put LeBron James and Anthony Davis in a position to be championship contenders and championship ready coming out of that break. Hey, I want to say one thing real quick. Uh, Chandler, you you talked about uh, how they're here, like D'Angelo Russell in particular, hearing about the, the rumors all the time. And, and, and But that's that's our game. You know, we can, mm-hmm. I mean, if you think about that for us, all the years that we've played, we've always, uh, you know, I can say I've always heard my name in trading, in trading block. And I'm sure you guys have done the same. But at some point, you got to block that out and play what is on the front of your jersey until further notice. And that's 100%. how you get past that, you know. I mean, like I say, I know every day you pick up a phone and you can see it, Ooh. you can hear it on the news and you hear the whisper. But like at some point, you have to have that discipline like, all right, cool. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Let me make sure I'm playing the best basketball I can play, whether I'm on this team or I get moved. Because when you go somewhere else, you want to be in rhythm and in a groove for your new team as well. So I, I just think you got to be able to figure out, you have to be able to block the noise out. And it's going to be the, it's a part of the circle around you. And I don't know any of these guys who, who, who are frustrated with that, their circle. But I'm like, let's not talk about that. You know what? Build me up. And, 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 and sometimes you got to self motivate yourself as well. But build me up, man. And, and, and help me get past this and get out of this phone. I feel like you're talking to the Dallas and, and listen, not only that, VC, I was I was with D'Angelo Russell his rookie year. This has been a narrative surrounding his, his name since the beginning of time in his NBA career. So at this point, if I'm here, I'm taking that chip on my shoulder and I'm going out there and I'm playing the best basketball that I can possibly play and give me an opportunity to kind of clean up my name and say, hey, listen, y'all got me messed up. I'm a valuable piece on this team, and I can help this team get from get from point A to point B. You know, so if I'm him, I'm taking that in stride, and I'm using that as motivation. I'm just playing better basketball. It is crazy because there's certain yeah. guys, there's certain guys like like Buddy Heald has been on the trading block his entire career, oh. right? So, you know what I mean? So it is. You hear it's part of the business all the time, but when it comes to you, you can see certain guys they get salty and they don't take that. But as long as you have the understanding, like you're saying, Vince. And you're playing basketball at the end of the day, right? Like, so you have to stay ready. You have to stay motivated. And you have to block out all that stuff. Even though nowadays with social media, everyone has a voice, everyone has an opinion. It's tough. And these, these guys get frustrated. I want to make moves, but I, I don't want there to be any rules in place. Vince, we're going to start with you. Nobody's untouchable on this Lakers team. What are you going to do? I feel, I feel like the first thing you need to do is solidify your, your point guard position. Uh, and, and not put the expectation on LeBron to be the ball handler. And uh, I think Lou, Lou said, or, or, or Chandler, one of you guys said, you can't expect LeBron to do everything. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Chandler, you said that the emotional leader, you're playing your most minutes with the most energy. So I just think, think you need to find another floor general. I, 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 and I'm going to say a guy like Arondo, who's not afraid to get in AD's face, who's not afraid to get in uh, LeBron's face and, and, and get those guys correct in moments as well, but also be a floor general out there and create for other guys. Because I feel like at some point you're going to run LeBron in the ground. He's great. He's one of the best to ever do it. But at some point you're going to have to have somebody to take the pressure off him. We always say AD, AD. Okay, fine. He does it in spurts as well, but you still need a floor general in my opinion. And some shooting. And some shit. Oh, good Lord. Well, who's, who's Rondo like that you could go get? There's nobody like Rondo. I, but, I, I mean, feel like that's tough. I don't. I don't hate Dejounte Murray on this team. If I can flip yeah. him for D. 
D'Lo and Rui in a pick or something for DeJounte Murray. He's young. He's going into his prime. He can score. He can facilitate. He can defend. He kind of fits this culture of this roster. Because I like their role players. Like Vince, uh, I like Tori and Prince. I like Cameron. Those guys know their roles. But they need somebody else to kind of set the table. They definitely need LeBron healthy. They definitely need Anthony Davis dominating. But they do need that Rondo, DeJounte Murray, that kind of that lead guard to take over. And Austin Reeves is great. But he's, I, I, we've seen that he's better off the bench. He's better going to that against second string defenses. He can score. He can shoot the ball. But I do think they're one trade away. And I do think they have interesting assets that other teams would like. And Lou. so for me, it's it. Listen, we have three different opinions on what they should fix. That's a bad. Love that's it. a bad thing, because <laughs> I feel like they're losing a lot of these wing matchups. Man, you got to go out there. And get you a, a DeRozan. You got to go get a Levine. I'm, I'm not. I wouldn't even be mad at you put P, uh, Siakam in that position. Someone that can win those wing matchups. Because at the end of the day, I agree with you guys. You need a floor general. You need somebody who's going to set the table. But we all know LeBron James is going to bring that ball up the floor, and he's going to control the tempo of the game. He's going to control everything from on both ends of the floor um, with just his leadership skills, and that's that's just how he plays. He's going to be the point guard of that team. So for me, when he goes out, you got to be able to give the ball to somebody in that mid post that's going to face up, that can give you both options to turn around and go get you a bucket. And on the other end of the floor, you know, sit down and guard somebody as well. And I, I just feel like, you know, Prince is a, is a great guy in that position. Austin Reeves is a great, great guy in that position. But for the aspirations for the Lakers, they need a big name guy. Yes or no, Vince? LeBron wins another title. Uh, it, it, this year or in general? Ever. Oh, man, that's a tough question. Um, no. <laughs> no. Chandler? It's so hard to tell, right? Is he, oh, so he going to go to the best team in three years and play, you know, and play with his son? Three and get years? Chip? I'm just – I'm not counting this dude out to still play in three years. <laughs> the easy answer is no, right? The Lakers aren't winning this year. Who knows what they're going to look like next year. But, man, I'm not counting this dude out to do anything. So you God, you're yes. such a chicken. You are such no, a chicken. You said yes. No. My answer is no for now. But you know, okay. So that's my answer too. No for now. <laughs> championships. They're getting so watered down. Everyone, anyone can just go sign a ten day right now and get a championship. Vince, you don't. You, you, I don't know. I can't. I don't know what's gonna happen in two or three years. Oh really? You don't know what's gonna just happen in two or three years? Say Taylor? no. Come on. <laughs> my answer is no. My answer. Taylor okay. gave us all a. Thank you. You gave us all that fluff just <laughs> not to a say a clean no. Around. Give you us a clean no. <laughs> oh, are you running for office? What was that? Lou, are you a no or a yes? <laughs> yeah, no. All right. No, okay, let's okay go. moving on. Let's go to the Warriors. Let's do this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, look, I don't want to just talk about the Lakers struggling because we got a Warriors team that also looks lost, and they've admittedly said that. Um, Steve Kerr said Steph's already wiped out, Vince. Earlier in the show, we are thinking Warriors can never be truly counted out. But to think that Steph is already wiped out and hear that, is this team done? There, I mean, I, my answer would kind of fill into what <laughs> CP said earlier. I mean, you <laughs> never can count these guys out. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think they are fragile. Hmm? Mm. I think they're fragile right now. And I, I think they need to... They need to find some youth in some offense. I mean, I think a, a, a Zach Levine... Like, you know, some pop, they need something. You know, we already talked about, the, they're young guys. I mean, M Moody and Kaminga, uh, I think they have potential. But my, my thing with, with Kaminga, for instance, I, mm -hmm. I, I think they're trying to make him be a newer version of Draymond instead of utilizing the skill that he has. They want him to be a, a creator and making plays. And he, he, he'll he tell you, he wants to get buckets. That's what he is. So I, I, I just think it's just... You have to find the pieces that fit with your superstars. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna keep them, you better be nurturing and and trying to mature some of your younger guys on the back end coming up because right now it's just where are they? They're gonna at best I think they're gonna be in the middle of the pack. Mm -hmm. And obviously, when you get to the playoffs, anything can happen because of their experience. But I, I think a lot of a lot of it, honestly, guys. To my, this is my opinion. I think Draymond plays a huge role because yes, he he's the floor general on the defensive end, and like he said, offensively he's going to make a big difference. But I I think what it's doing right now, it's wearing Steph down because he's trying to answer the question on the court, but answer those whispers and talks off the court as well. I am a leader. 
I am me. I can do this. I can do that. You know, it's just, it's a lot going on. So I think they're going to need the best ver version of Draymond. But I, I think they're 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 middle of the pack at, at best right now. So are they cooked or not, Vince? <laughs> I, 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 they're, we're, they're, we're giving a lot hey, of runner hey. They're not burnt, they're not burnt bacon. They're not burnt bacon, man. They're not they're they're, they're not they're not they're, 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 Go ahead, Lou. If if wiped out is if wiped out is twenty seven points a game, I would love to be wiped out. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> I would urgent. love to be wiped out. I think this is a, I think this is a smoke screen. I think Steve Kerr is trying to unarm everybody, and he's gonna sneak in and play in with Steph Curry being wiped out at twenty seven points a game. Yeah, so it's a good version. Well, hold on, because the Kaminga thing is like he's we've already heard. You know, he was a little bit disillusioned, didn't love what was going on. He and Steve Kerr had a talk, but they have like three of the best vets of all time on that team. If you guys are on that team, what are you telling Kaminga? Like, what are you getting him to understand so hopefully this thing can smooth? Vince. I mean, you're just constantly, first of all, you just got to figure out how he ticks because you can't, you, I've learned, and Lou, you, you've you been in young, long, young locker rooms as well. Everybody isn't wired the same. And, and then from there, you just kind of just figure it out. You got to talk through situations, good and bad. Uh, when he comes out, when he's frustrated, once they, you know, it's just... Young guys are harder to talk to now because of the money they're making, man. It's just huh? the reality. The it, entitlement. It's, it's hard. Yeah, yeah, man. It's, entitlement. It's, it's, it's just hard to go in the locker room as a veteran. And especially, <laughs> I mean, they have a lot of them that are proven. And, and you would think when those guys talk, you listen. And they do. But at the same time, they're like, yeah, but, you know, in, in Kaminga's situation, I could go out there and get buckets. I can score. I can go get buckets like you. And I think. When you go to go to state, correct me guys if I'm wrong, you you fall in the pecking order in that system, you know, of of priority scoring. And Kaminga feels like he's a guy that should be high priority, putting the ball in the basket, and that's not what they're asking of him right now. And you, and you know order, what? Yeah. Ha, have we even confirmed? Have we even confirmed that Kaminga said that? You know, I, I see that it said reports came out that he's mm -hmm. lost faith in Steve Kerr, but he's getting an opportunity to play. He's getting an opportunity to go out on the floor each and every night, play big minutes since Draymond has been out. And he's produced. He's played well, and I think that carries over. So I don't even know if we confirmed that he even said something like this or, or, or even have those sentiments. You know, sometimes you get these reports and you get, you get people that say that they have an a, a, a unknown source and all, all of those things. But from, from the vantage point that I have, it looks like he's had an opportunity to play and he's taking advantage of the situation. I mean, look, the way it was – told in the news and the media was it was actually a beautiful narrative because it was he was not not happy had a talk with steve kerr and then came out and had a great game so you know whoever if it's real if it's not real if it's planted it it did what it was supposed to do um this is a warrior team I, it's interesting you say pecking order because if you don't fall in uh we've seen what happens as well you get shipped out so three and seven over their last 10 12th place chandler do you do you make moves i mean it's hard to even ask that about this warriors team but here we are yeah, I, I don't know what moves that they can make. I mean, I think right now, I think everybody is on the table, unless your name is Steph Curry. He's the only one that's consistently played an elite level this year. Draymond's obviously been in and out of the lineup for other issues. Clay Thompson's had an up and down year. Andrew Wiggins, I don't know what's going on with him, but the, you know, the, when they made that championship run a couple years ago, he was arguably their best player, their second best player for sure. So I, I think that they put a lot of pressure on this young core that they have, right? Kaminga, Moody, Podzinski. And I don't think that any of those guys are ready for that next step and to become the face of a franchise. And I think that's scary for the organization when you see your guys, Clay, Draymond, Steph getting older, and they don't really have those replacements in place yet. So you see Kaminga, he's unhappy. He goes and plays a career high in minutes and, and, and great. But I don't think he produced as much as they expected. I don't think he's developed as quick as they've wanted. Um, and they're kind of stuck in this no man's land where they're trying to maximize, the, 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 maximize this, this time that Steph Curry is playing at this level. And they haven't. And it's frustrating. And I'm sure they're looking. And Mike Dunleavy, he took over a tough job, man. Bob Myers got out of this at the perfect timing, and I don't know what there is to do because there is there is young assets that other teams could use. They, are they going to pay Clay Thompson? Are they going to trade Draymond Green? So there's so many unanswered questions that this team 
can do. But I think for this season, you just try and rally. You try and you try and find a way to sneak into that play in because then anything can happen if you're fully healthy. And I think it starts tonight with getting Draymond Green back. And I think this falls into in, in the line of what Lou was talking about, about the expect, expectation of the organization. This is the Golden State Warriors. When you come in as a, as a young rookie, you have to learn and follow what's going on, follow the process, and pick it up as quickly as possible. If not, you know, there's time to move on. Like you said, they're trying to utilize the window they have with, obviously, Draymond, Clay, and Steph, and, and, and some of the and, and some of the other guys who've been there. But if you can't, it's like, oh, my goodness, they're going to move on. Anywhere else, any other organization, maybe not the Lakers, but any other organization, they'll have patience with these the young talent of Kaminga because he is a talent. This guy is going to be something in this league. I think Moody is going to be something in, in this league, but unfortunately, it's it's where he is. You know what I'm saying? It's, you, 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 we all look at those two young guys and be like, nah, they're going to be something. It's just... Not there. You have to fall in line, which is tough for these young guys. And you said it. It's it's just, you know, what these guys, you know, it's just a, they feel like they should be this regardless of who they're playing with. And it's not going to work there. And that's the problem. They see Clay struggling. They see Draymond struggling. They're like, damn, I can, I can do that. Like, why aren't my minutes going up? Why? And, and then, Or like Wiggins. Said, yeah, exactly. So they're thinking that their role should be bigger. And, and they're just, you know, they don't understand. Like you talked about the pecking order and the respect and putting these vets ahead of them. They think they can be doing so much more right now than they're given the opportunity. Man, this flying by. Time's flying by. VC, a pleasure as always, uh, we will talk soon. And we're taking a quick break here. Run it back. We'll be back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Yeah.